Hey everybody, coming to you from the icebox. Got my space heater on, but it's not quite very warm in here. Um, Valerie Leotis sent me the interview questions for the reanimated writers uh, group uh, that I'm going to be a part of. You can find that at AfterShockZombieSeries.com. So here we go. Question one. What are your published works and what are you working on? Well, um, so I'm self-publishing. Um, right now, I've only been working on a 10-page ash can. I've just started, and uh, it's a comic book called Bud. Uh, stands for Bionic Utility Device. It's about an uh, artificially intelligent robot that wakes up five years into the zombie apocalypse. It's been a lot of fun to write that one. Um, the artist for it is David Moreno, uh, and I came across him in the Sketchy Bug um, artist group. Um, bum, 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 bum. Uh, some of the projects I've been working on. So I've been working on Bud, of course. That's my main project. Um, I've got a couple of scripts that I'm working on for some anthologies that I'm looking to submit to. I'm also actually developing a zombie-themed board game as well. It's um, just in the beginning stages. It was an idea I had. And actually, it's come a long way since I first thought of it. There's uh, three different levels of gameplay, and I have all three uh, loosely planned out. I live actually right down the street from a gaming store, so my plan is to bring it in there and just have people t uh, test play it and just get all the bugs worked out of it, that kind of thing. So that will be exciting. I'm hoping to kind of put a little bit more work into that and get that moving along forward as well. Um, other than that, I published the New Zombies weekly newsletter uh, with interviews with zombie content creators. Um, we've done comic books, uh, zombie makeup artists, um, you know, screenwriters for zombie movies, uh, authors of zombie novels, and it's just really interesting to get to talk to someone who loves the zombie genre enough to create content for it um, about the zombies and kind of our take on them. So that's what I've been working on. If someone was just hearing about you for the first time, what one thing would you want them to know? That's a, that's a good question. Um, I think I would want people to know that uh, just how dedicated I am to getting my story out there. Um, I started this process without any kind of knowledge about the comic book industry uh, from a creator standpoint. Um, I've been into comics since I was a kid. I've been into zombie content since I was a kid. Um, but, you know, the nitty gritty of uh, how to form an idea, turn it into a script, find an artist, uh, you know, get people to look at your uh, product once it's been made, all that kind of stuff. I had to just do endless amounts of research on. Um, so just the fact that I go full steam, I learn as much as I can to kind of lessen the, the curve, the failing curve. Um, and I think it really shows through in my comic. Question three. Did you always want to be a writer? Not always. Um, I think the, the earliest I can remember wanting to be something was an orthodontist. Um, after that, I think, like, I knew I wanted to travel a lot, and so I did that. And uh, staying at hostels led me to really like the hostel atmosphere, just the, the feeling of community, everybody coming and traveling through. I was going to actually do, I'm a musician, so I was going to be a musician's hostel where it would also be a recording studio. Um, I would plan to open up my own hostel and do this. Um, but uh, I wasn't quite done traveling myself yet, so that kind of never came to fruition. Um, but I've held so many jobs in my life and traveled to so many different places and experienced so many different weird people and situations that um, I really liked telling the stories. And it seemed like a fun way to tell a fictional story by giving my characters the kinds of experiences that I had. Um, so I started writing, uh, you know, I think I got it like five chapters deep into a novel and the idea that was bouncing around my head, it was like, oh, good, finally, it's out and it's here. And I felt satiated and I just stopped working on it. Um, it wasn't until I came up with the idea for Bud, my comic book, that it just wouldn't go away. Every time, I mean, I think about it constantly. Uh, I have hundreds and hundreds of notes on my phones for things that will probably be like a year from now when I actually get to write that part of the story because it's so far down the line. Um, so it's just this, this drive for this particular story um, that's really got me going. And now that I know how to do the process and actually make it and get it out there in front of eyes, um, it makes the rest of my stories that much more uh, obtainable in, in my eyes. Number four, what has been the biggest adventure of your life? Oh, okay, well, that's a good question. Um, like I said earlier, I kind of uh, 
did some traveling when I was younger. I graduated high school and just decided to kind of become a traveling hobo. So that was pretty exciting. Uh, I lived a lot of places, my car being one of them. Um, but uh, let's see, I spent some time in New Mexico uh, where I worked for America Online. Uh, I worked in Michigan with a t-shirt company. Uh, if you love comic books as much as I do and you go to comic book conventions, you might know this company. They're styling online. They're the big cage of shirts. If you've ever walked into a booth that was just a tower of t-shirts, that's styling online. Um, that was a fun job. Uh, it was basically traveling the U.S. in an RV with a bunch of people I just met and selling t-shirts at comic book conventions. Yeah, I would say I would say the whole traveling part of my life would be the biggest adventure. Get just hitchhiking, traveling, getting to meet people on the road that kind of doing the same thing I was doing. Uh, everybody has their own stories of what's going on and why they are wherever they were when I met them. And it was just kind of a cool experience to get to know people who are from all over the place in the U.S. Next question. If the zombie apocalypse were to happen tomorrow, would you be prepared? Um, Psychologically, I think I'd be prepared. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm one of those zombie fans who, with me and my friends, we talk about the zombie apocalypse. Uh, back when I lived in California, me and my best friend, we had our plan. It was locked down. I guess it could have been used for any kind of, uh, what do they call it, um, SHTF scenarios. Uh, but, you know, we loved zombies. So that's the, what we used it for. And basically it was taking the, the riverbed, uh, the, the drainage ditch to the ocean, um, where my friend worked at a hotel that we would um, fortify. And, you know, hotels, lots of places to sleep, uh, kitchen, huge kitchen full of food, uh, pretty easy to fortify. You just fortify downstairs. Anyway, we decided all that stuff between us and realized that was the best plan. Out here, though, I'm kind of in a very different situation. Um, I've got this guy hanging on my wall. But pretty cool knife. Uh, this was my dad's knife, and it actually has a compass on the handle. And I believe this compass can actually screw off. And you can put stuff in there. So there's nothing in there. There's like some matches and some other stuff. So that's about as prepared as I am, is this knife. Um, but, you know, I, I, I loved watching Bear Grylls and Les Stroud. Um, there was a YouTuber that I used to watch. Um, he might still be making videos, but uh, it, I think his name he went by was Yankee Prepper. Uh, it was just a prepper channel, and he kind of, you know, basically showed how he made himself off the grid and got his food supply. So I think I, I have the knowledge and the recesses of my brain um, for surviving in a situation where society is completely broken down. I think I could run away from zombies. I think I'm pretty capable psychologically of having to kill a zombie. Um, I'm not in very good shape. I've shot a weapon a few times. Uh, I was okay. Uh, told I was kind of a natural. I mean, I wasn't getting bullseyes from the very get-go, but by the end of uh, my shooting experience, we had little water bottles with cherry tomatoes sitting on top, and I was nailing those cherry tomatoes right off the top of those bottles. It was a lot of fun. It's, uh, <laughs> it's empowering to not only shoot a gun, but then to shoot a gun and kind of be really good at it. Um, so I think I would do okay, but... You know, I don't really have any combat experience like some military uh, veterans might. What did I do with my phone? I didn't even realize I dropped my phone. All right, question number six. What three things do you feel everyone should have to be ready for a survival situation? Um... Let's see. Um, so a bug out bag, naturally number one. You want something you can just grab and be gone with. So a bug out bag, uh, you know, my knife would be in a bug out bag. Uh, I don't have a bug out bag. But a knife, that knife would probably be in the bug out bag along with some canned food, um, granola bars, you know, things like that. Food that keeps and can just sit there. Um, some water, drinkable water. Uh, probably some stuff to sanitize some water that's the thing I'm, I'm you asked me for three things and i'm telling you how to put together a bug out bag a bug out bag is going to have a lot of things in it but a bug out bag with all the supplies in there you can fit to up your chances of surviving i count that as one item um so after that one item you know you want a weapon 
Um, so in a zombie apocalypse, guns are good, but bullets are limited. Guns are also loud and can draw zombies to you. So I would go with a blunt force instrument. Um, people like knives, but the truth of the matter is that you don't really see in TV shows and movies is that knives get stuck in bone very easily. So a blunt instrument like a baseball bat is fine. You can put nails in it, but there's always a chance the nails will get stuck and you're going to have to try to yank it out and use some force. Um, but, you know, a blunt instrument is a hit to the head. I mean, it kills people all the time in real life. So just being able to crack someone in the back of the head with a baseball bat or a cricket bat or a crowbar, any kind of blunt force instrument, uh, doesn't need reloading, doesn't need bullets, but that would be the best thing. I would say a crowbar would be the best thing to have, uh, maybe even as the second item, because not only is it a weapon, but you can also use it to get into places that might be locked. So bug out bag, crowbar, knowledge. Yeah, the last one would be knowledge, uh, information. Like I said, I've watched a lot of survival shows um, I used to be in Boy Scouts, so I have some things that I've learned back then. Um, knowing what to do in those situations, having a base of, of knowledge for how to identify drinkable water. Um, you know, maybe even make sure in the bug out bag having a book that you can look at plants to eat, plants not to eat, that sort of thing. Uh, and just being vigilant, you know, maybe along with knowledge under that could be uh, situational awareness, having that. Um, that might be a good thing to kind of practice, you know, almost like you would practice martial arts, practice situational awareness. I'm not sure exactly how one would go about doing that, but um, it'd be an inter interesting thing to look up. So those would be the three things, a bug out bag, crowbar, and knowledge. Let's see, who would you want with you if civilized society fell apart? Um, good question. Uh, well, I'm not really around any family. I mean, would this be like a snap my fingers and they were with me? Or like who I think my, my best chance of survival would be if I had this person with me? Um, well, if it's the best chance of survival, um, a fellow zombie author, Elsie uh, Champlin, she, uh, I actually interviewed her for my newsletter. And uh, I learned that she is proficient in firearms, martial arts, uh, Krav Maga specifically. Um, she lives up in the mountains away from, you know, a city full of people that could potentially turn into zombies. Um, so I think my best chance of survival would be to snap my fingers and have Elsie Champlin at my side to fight the zombie horde. What two books would be in your, in your bug out bag, knowing you would have to read them over and over? Okay, I got it. Uh, a book I really, really enjoyed. And one of the reasons I really enjoyed it is because it is a huge book. Um, it's the Good Earth Trilogy. Um, you can get them separately, but hey, if I, I, the book I had had all three in one, so I'd say that counts. And it's basically just the story of, um, it's by Pearl S. Buck, I believe, and it's the story of, um, this Asian family, uh, back in, like, feudal war times, um, and then the next book is kind of <clears throat> that main character's family that he creates, and where his kids are at. And then the last book is their kids. So you get to see like three generations um, growing up during a time where it was like before, during, and after a huge Western influence on the culture. Um, just thought it was a really interesting book. I have always thought I could read it again if I got my hands on a copy. Um, yeah, my copy disappeared somewhere. I've moved a lot. So that would probably be one of the books I would have. It's a long read. It's interesting. And technically it's three books in one. Um, another book I would, I would want to have probably something along the lines for survival, you know, like, um, maybe like how to set traps, maybe like how to track, um, identifying edible plants, things like that. Okay. Question number nine, if you were thrown into the dark ages, what would you miss most? Um, probably like people. Is that a good answer? Like my family, friends, my dog? Um, I was going to say, to be honest, if I got my dog with me, I'd probably be able to cope with all the other losses. <laughs> um, food is very important to me. So the fact that the food would be very, very different. Although who knows, I might waltz into the dark ages and be the next um, Anthony Bourdain or something like that. Um, but yeah, it would probably be... The, the confidence I have living in the time I'm familiar with, and food. Last question. 
What is the most surprising fact about you? Hmm. Well, I've talked a lot about how I was like kind of a traveling hobo. Uh, I've worked more jobs than years I've been alive. Um, uh, this is pretty interesting uh, for me, scary. It's the fact that I quit my job uh, to become a writer full time. That's why I do as much research as I do. It's why I put in as much work as I can. Uh, it's because this is what I do full time. Uh, I used to be a salesman, um, and actually, if you can believe it, a door-to-door -door vacuum salesman. Uh, they still exist. So while working sales, I was kind of trying to develop my idea, and just so much time passed, like a year or more passed, and I really wasn't making any progress. So I decided that it was about time. I wasn't happy with the job. Um, you know, it, it didn't, it didn't fulfill me. I decided to quit that job, and focus on my writing. Doing all the research I needed to do, started setting up my social media accounts, uh, found an artist for my comics, started working on other scripts, and everything's been going like bang gangbusters ever since. So that's a pretty surprising fact, I would assume, the fact that I quit my job in order to pursue my, my career in writing. All right, well, those are all the questions. I guess now I'll go ahead and tell you kind of where you can find all my stuff. So my comic, Bud, uh, you can find that 10-page Ashcan, including a, a wraparound cover on webtoons.com. You can hang out with me on Twitter. Um, I retweet anything zombie related. All you gotta do is tag me and that's at new zombie comics on Twitter. Twitter.com slash new zombie comics to find my account. Um, then there's Facebook. So we got facebook.com slash bud the comic if you wanna kind of check out the progress on the comic. You can find my author's Facebook. Uh, it's just my first little page. Uh, and that's Austin Humphrey. For Facebook. You can sign up for my newsletter. Uh, it's the New Zombie Weekly Newsletter where I have interviews with zombie content creators um, at budthecomic.com. Well, I had a lot of fun answering these questions. I want to thank you for letting me participate in this uh, interview process and uh, stay fresh. <laughs>